Sculpture out in nature combines human handiwork with a wonderful outdoor backdrop. North Carolina artist Patrick Doherty creates impressively large sculptures in nature made right from nature. Over the last 30 years, he's built more than 275 giant sculptures all over the world, pieces that often invite you to walk right inside them. And now you can surround yourself with his monumental pieces at the Montreal Botanical Garden while they last. Flowers and plants grow at the Montreal Botanical Garden. So do sculptures. Large sculptures grew in the garden over the summer, drawn from the visions of North Carolina artist Patrick Doherty. This work is a little bit like uh, a drawing, and a lot of the conventions you use with a pencil, you use with the sticks. It's really a, a drawing style, but still in all the, the surfaces seem to be able to move on their own, a bit of implied motion at least. <laughs> Some sculptors work in metal, some work in marble. Doherty works in sticks. Whether he's sculpting in France, Japan, Australia, Scotland, or the US, it's always sticks. I might be in the Midwest, I use elm or Hawaii, I might use strawberry guava. But in some places like here in Canada, there's a lot of willow. Uh, these are particularly great willows. They're very flexible, they're easy to bend. Uh, so this has been a, a big joy uh, to work with this kind of material. In fact, there's only one material in this entire sculpture. This piece is made out of entirely of willow. It's woven together. That's the method uh, of holding it together. In this work, there's no screws, metal, string. It's just simply and thoroughly sticks. I'm not sure that I know how to define beauty. I can just say that, that if you bend a stick just before it breaks, it's got a beautiful curve to it. After 17 long days of work, Doherty, his two assistants, and a team of 35 volunteers finished this piece of the garden first. I've named the piece behind me, Thrown for a Loop. And in this case, it's kind of an endless knot. Uh, that starts and the wall just moves in and, in and amongst itself. It constitutes 13 different rooms, numerous doors, uh, lots of passages that are not quite doors, and it really invites the public to take a stroll through. It's a real exploration because you don't know what angles you're about to meet. You're flowing from area to area and everything is open. So it's very enjoyable and it's open to the sky as well as in front of you, behind you. You just don't know what kind of shape you're about to wander into. You can walk through it, but you couldn't walk out again and tell the plans. So it's winding everywhere, a bit like a labyrinth, but it's smooth. And because it's made of wood, it's not intimidating. It's like a friendly labyrinth, I suppose. But you won't have forever to wander in the labyrinth. With the delicate look of a drawing and the use of flexible, natural material, this piece should last about two years. I think that when you do temporary work, the experience has to be a bit more essential. In other words, there's no time to lollygag around and wait for people to come understand your work. You really have to make work that's approachable, uh, that that beckons the public in, that gets people to come running over and look at it so that there is an opportunity for people to really appreciate it while it's uh, at its best. This sculpture is built to withstand two Canadian winners. And so, you know, we have no roof. And part of that was an effort to make something that was intriguing but wouldn't really be subject to the load of snow in the winter. I started a second piece here, and it's going to have a big oculus, a big opening in, this, in the dome, so that most of the weight of the snow uh, drops back uh, through. Volunteer Una Hannon spent many weeks of her summer working on the second piece, overseen by Doherty and his assistants. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm learning a lot from them, and they're, they're very open to sharing their skills with us. The artist says he enjoys working with local volunteers. The pieces accumulate faster, and they also have a a friend in the neighborhood. You know, it's hard to hate a work if your neighbors are working on it. 
On a personal level, I want to learn how to do this because I'd like to create something similar in my back garden on a smaller scale, of course. But um, it's nice to understand how to get started and what you can do with the materials as well. Working in large public spaces motivates Doherty to create large pieces. The sculpture should fit its site well. If you're given a huge site, you don't want a very small, insignificant work right in the middle of it. He named the second piece Fancy's Bower, a poetic name for something he describes as an architectural folly. Maybe it's a kind of city like Xanadu. There's something out there. There's a mystical, natural place that conscripted itself, you know. So we always try for something that looks man-made, but then it's unclear if, you know, maybe the wind came up and blew it into some configuration and maybe the animals made it. The artist started a third piece in Montreal and let the garden visitors complete it. It allows me to just have a more of a sense of the community, but it also makes sculpture comprehensible. I mean, it's not like it's something that the gods do. It's just like normal people try to build things that are entertaining, that are compelling, uh, that add interest to your life. Everyone has their compulsions. My compulsion seems to be about making things. I think that in looking at this work, people find a fondness for the natural world. I'm very pleased with the work. I've been hugely interested in it and have enjoyed doing it for these last years. To learn more about exhibits at the Montreal Botanical Garden, head to espacepourlavie.ca. And for more stories about people who shine brightly, go to mountainlake.org slash spotlight. Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.